the genetic algorithm is such a strong technology. In the lecture, we cover the theoretical basis, the scientific basis of genetic algorithms. We also understood its rationale. Now, let's see it in action. I'd like to show you a few famous examples of GA applications. We will begin first with visualizing GA evolution. There's nothing like seeing the evolution in our eyes. It's both fun and very educational. Then we will try to experiment with an online tool that demonstrates how the different components in a GA, the mutations, the crossovers, and so on, influence its action. And we will end with a medical application from a recent paper that after this lesson, you can also install on your machine. So let's begin with visualization. One cannot not mention a very important woman in the field of GA visualization. She is very famous. She is very beautiful. She is the Mona Lisa. I think no one can explain why, but she became the goal of many GA researchers who let their algorithms draw the Mona Lisa, but only with very few objects. For example, circles. The idea is to let the GA play with, say, a hundred circles, decide where each circle is placed on the screen, its size and its color, in such a way that the face of the Mona Lisa will emerge. So here is the first GA that we will see. Ready? Three, two, one, and we are running. What you're seeing on the screen now, at the right side, is the population that goes through evolution from uh, one generation to another. So actually, each square is a small representation of the Mona Lisa, where the circles are placed uh, at different positions in the square. On the left side, you see the best individual in the population. So as you can see, the level of similarity increases. Right now it's around 70%. Once in a while you can spot a big burst of colors. Usually it means a mutation that wasn't so beneficial, but still it lasted for a while. If you remember, we also let not so strong individuals to produce offspring. Here it is. We got 75% with 100 shapes and 250,000 generations. We will soon discuss how they made this simulation, but first let's change the chromosome so it includes more shapes, 250, which will probably result in a, even a better picture. And we are running again. The algorithm adds more and more shapes as it tries to increase the similarity to the actual Mona Lisa. Here we see what is the beginning of a mouth. Again, a few bursts of colors representing not so beneficial mutations. And voila! The Mona Lisa created by an evolutionary process. No one has actually programmed the computer to draw the Mona Lisa. This nice demonstration was created by Matthew Miller. Check out his wonderful YouTube channel in this address. So let's see what they did do. I will show here a simple version of this GA implementation, which as in many other cases follows the steps I showed in the lecture. In order to implement any GA, we need to decide on the chromosomal representation, create an initial population with random process, compose a fitness function, decide on a genetic crossover mechanism, and of course, on mutations. Let's begin with representation. The representation could be something like this. Let's assume again, for simplicity, that we have only 10 circles. Not less, not more. So for each circle, we need to represent its position on the screen in the x-axis and in the y-axis, as well as define a radius and a color. This matrix would represent one solution, one individual in the population. 
in the Big Bang step, we will pick random values for this matrix. Of course, although the values are random, they must be valid. So the circles should not go outside the picture. The color encoding should be set according to a certain uh, palette. The radius should not be bigger than the picture itself and so on. If our population is in the size of a thousand individuals, we will create a thousand matrices like this one, but with different values, of course. Next, it's the famous fitness function. This is quite easy. For each matrix, we will create the phenotype, the picture it represents, and compare the picture to the original Mona Lisa. We will just go pixel by pixel and quantify how similar they are. Next, it's the crossover mechanism. Here we will just pick a random position in the picture and decide, for example, to split the picture into two at that position. Let's say the random process chose this place. So we can cut the Mona Lisa. We will take the left side from one parent and the right side from another parent. I feel like a magician. <laughs> and we will connect her like this. Now here I did this on the phenotype, on the picture itself. Of course, I need to apply it on the genotype, but the idea is the same. The new offspring will have the circles that were on the left side of one parent and on the right side of the second parent. We may need to do some adjustments for our representation to be kept valid. How do we do mutations? Just pick random value, let's say this one, and change it a bit. And we can do it for several values like that. This is how we implement genetic algorithms. Do you see how simple it is? It's simple but very powerful. Of course, the actual implementation requires some programming, which you may know or don't know. Nonetheless, while there are many programmers out there, what the world is still lacking is people who can connect a medical problem with such a solution and guide programmers on how to make it a reality. Next, I want to show you a GA that has already been implemented so we can experiment uh, with it a bit and see how the different parameters like crossover mechanism and uh, mutation rate influence the results. For a problem, I chose something that is very common to take a raw data, let's say that is sampled over time and interpret it by a method called curve fitting. Check out this website in the following link. Our goal is to come up with parameters of a curve equation, let's say a polynomial curve, that is closest to the data points. If we find this curve, if we find the parameters that make this curve and understand what they stand for, maybe we can get a better mechanistic understanding what this data really means. So as you can see, we can choose a certain data set, we can choose the number of iterations, Let's have a lot of iterations. The degree of the polynomial equation, we will keep it as uh, 4. The mutation rate, let's say 0 0.3. And the mutation mechanism. There are different mechanisms here, but we will just choose random. You can read more about them here. And the same goes for the crossover mechanism again. I'll just choose random and run it. Voila! This tool shows us curves from the whole evolution process and the final curve, the best one, is shown in red. This is the equation and its parameters. We can also see the average and the final error. Had we stopped it before, meaning had we done fewer iterations and run it again, the error will be higher. 31 in this example. But maybe if we increase the mutation rate a bit, we will get a better error. Oh yes. So thanks to random mutations, the GA encountered better solutions. So why not changing it to the maximum? Let's see. It was 29.95. Now it's 48. In this case, too many mutations interfered the GA to converge to a good solution. 
So let's go back to, let's say, 0 0.3 and see if we can change the crossover to be a bit, uh, a bit higher. What would be the result? Even better. The different individuals were able to exchange information, to exchange genetic material in a way that enabled the GA to converge faster or better. Finally, let's go back again and choose more iterations. Voila! Very nice. So, go ahead, give it a try. It's really fun. And now we will go to the final part of this lesson, where we will see a fascinating medical application. In the lectures, we discussed the ability of artificial intelligence to raise various hypotheses and using experimental data, prove or disprove each hypothesis using machine learning. For example, a decision tree or another supervised learning mechanism. Genetic algorithm is a fantastic tool for discovering good novel hypotheses in science. This research by Dorier et al. from the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics is a nice example. The genetic algorithm they built creates a model, a hypothesis, that explained actual experimental data. It is based on PKNs, which are prior knowledge networks. This is a model of a regulatory network. We will now discuss such networks very briefly, but in the next unit on systems biology, we will dive much more into this amazing field. The work in this paper is done in two parts. In part one, they take PKN and the set of training data as input. Prior knowledge networks, PKNs, summarize all known interactions between genes and or proteins of interest, usually obtained from the literature. Each node corresponds to a gene or a protein and its state is given by a Boolean variable, which can represent node expression or activity. Edges correspond to interactions between nodes and can be positive, activators, or negative, inhibitors. They usually describe all relevant regulatory interactions. They are general. They were built by using a variety of experimental conditions and systems. They are so general that some parts of it may not occur in a specific condition of biological context. When studying a specific condition, the fact that the model is general reduces its ability to make good analysis or predictions. Therefore, they used a GA to build a model that has only nodes and edges from the PKN but not all of them. So they discover only a subnetwork, but one that can reproduce the specific experimental data. This result can explain a specific experimental data as much as possible. The model will be contextualized to the experimental conditions. It will allow us to get insights into the underlying biomedical mechanisms and generate new testable hypotheses. Needless to say, there could be millions of optional subnetwork. Each contains only a specific combination of nodes and edges. Therefore, we need the genetic algorithm. Part two of this research is actually the fitness function of the GA, which is responsible in assessing the quality of a candidate model network. We won't get into how they assess the quality now, but as you can see in this figure, the GA causes the fitness score to decrease over time, to improve over time. In the right side, you can see the subnetwork that was discovered as the best one. This figure describes the overall process in high level. It begins with a gold standard network, a known contextual model, which by virtual in silico experiments is used to create virtual synthetic data, as you can see here. This is the test set. In parallel, the GA is used to take a big general PKN plus experimental data, the training set, and build a subnetwork. This network is also used to create virtual synthetic data, 
which is compared to the one that was inferred from the gold standard, the test set. If the data is similar, it means that the GA was able to come up with the right hypothesis. As I told you in the beginning, the actual genetic algorithm can be downloaded from this website and be installed on your machine. You can also find a very nice quick start guide that will guide you how to install and uh, use this software. Notice that this requires some programming knowledge. All right, we covered the concept of genetic algorithms from different angles. In the following assignment, you will see another paper, this time on heart disease, where a genetic algorithm was used to improve prediction capabilities by reducing the number of attributes in the dataset. How it did so and why? You will soon find out. Wow.